They've definitely got some stuff up the sleeve. I mean, I, I, you did praise them at VR's Anubis in terms of their, their closing up with the resiliency, yeah. but I still did feel that individually they were making uh, some sloppy mistakes. It wasn't yeah, the no, best counter strike that they were playing, and I think that's, that, valid. that's kind of the reason that Legacy have you know come in here with it, right? Uh, I, I feel that it's going to have involved a lot of Andy Stratting on their behalf, but it feels like a must-win map because I'm very scared about this veto for them. It almost feels like uh, do or die at every single moment and every single opportunity. Such is the RMRs. Yep, it's true. Let's see it then. Legacy starting on that CT side and MIBR taking space and Sonny. Oh, oh, oh Cold Zera. Straight into them. Exit trying to hit the trade and well, gets a dink onto Nekis. Legacy just wants to swing. We are going straight into that Glock of Exit. Needs to pull off the reload. But meanwhile, BR Enazan has found Doom Al. Oh, I just felt, feel like this round has done a disservice to Cole, but maybe Lato can bring it back, but he's going to get flanked. Drops behind him, has the drop on him. No, he doesn't. Lato wins out that fight drop. Oh, that one really stings. But Lato closes what started with a fantastic opener from Cole. That was unbelievable from Cole. We need to get a replay on that. because That player just, hadn't hit the ground. I know, just plucks them out the sky. Lato finding free as oh well. Oh my it's, god, what? It's even more ridiculous on the replay. Lato finding free there as well was incredibly relevant because it was him that was dragging Legacy, kicking and screaming through that Nouns BO3. Drop should have secured that kill, but he doesn't. And it's these rounds that go a little bit out of control that Legacy are going to profit on, and they need as many as they can. He dropped the ball. Yes. <laughs> Ouch. Both for MIBR and for everyone that had to bear with that joke. What a hectic way to start, and now we've got a very much a controlled second round. Just waiting for the opportunity. No utility, it has to be one of these contact pushes. The MP9 of cold is going to take the first contact, and then the MP... Nine we're getting bailed out by that M4, or maybe doesn't even need it. Cold Zero finds free, announces himself on the server once more. Legacy, dispatching of that with ease. Yeah, Cold, you can see him also getting a little bit vocal there. Good. Couldn't quite hear, but I can see in the little picture in picture, he was getting a big yeah out of, I guess, I don't know, probably not yeah, but you know, something in Portuguese. We have an eco frag. Cole gets four and gets that AWP out. The primary AWP of Legacy. A new era for Cold Zero. Honestly, he's doing pretty decent at it. The thing for Cold is actually on CT size, he is quite dynamic. A lot of damage being done to Lato early. Responded by Legacy with nades. Insani taking a peek in towards middle but not finding anything. Cold Zero remains anchored over towards A main. Demal's going to be the floating support. He's actually just got an incendiary in hands of this contact. He'll throw that four, but Nekes wants to take the contact first. Goes one for one. The damage on the exit. And drop. Ah, oh, felt like maybe he had an opportunity. Can't find the kill. Faith just walked into mid. He's just peeking with a grenade in hand, but it is space that he can take. He's trying to be a nuisance. He's trying to keep the A players over here at the very least, and that's forced a rotation. Lato's come over to the mid side of the map, which frees up. MIBR to isolate this kill onto Bartan. It's so imperative. He survives. He feels incredibly pressured and needs to retreat behind that smoke. That helps. Lasso finding safe. Now it's just one direction. Yeah, it feels like safe goes a little bit too quickly there. They're going to be allowed the bomb plant just about as the Molotov has land, but the smoke gives the color. Oh, nice shot. But Demal's there for the trade. An exit. Spraying. Can't connect. The successful retake comes through. MRBR at least get the bomb plant from a what, 3v5 position or 3v4 position. Not too bad. No, not too bad, but also you've got to praise Legacy here. 
because it's everyone now just chiming in with multi-kills. It's not just reliant on Lasso, for example. It's Cold Zera really injecting a lot of passion into these players. Dumao comes in with a multi-kill. It's an effective trade. Legacy are always playing very protective. It's always a default out of them. That's something that Nekis was saying in that interview. And MIBR, the, the style of rounds that they play as well, it feels very defaulty at times. So now it relies purely on whose fundamentals are better, who's got the quicker reactions. And currently, it feels like Legacy are all over MIBR. Tech Knives and a Mac 10. Well, maybe they might set up for a pop play somewhere. They're going to be defaulting early. Sunny just trying to spot out information towards middle. Yorp is left solo over towards A at the start. That could be the position that you can maybe punish with these tech nines. You, you kind of... Actually, I don't know if they even know the orbs we play. I don't think they've seen it. Not yet. They're trying to set up the mid utility. They just want to try and funnel Legacy into these tech nines. You see the X has got a smoke four camera. The mod is going to go in and push them forward. Neck is good timing on his incendiary. He's into the fight. We'll find the first and the second as well. Needs to come through the smoke safe to retrieve the rifle, but Dumal steps in and it's a shutout yet again by Legacy. Oh, nice second kill from Dumal as well. Good attempt on the pot play. Neck is though stepping up. Now that all should get revealed. There it is. Cold finding his. Nekes is a, a talking point that I'm sure we'll be touching on throughout this series in terms of he's taken over the mantle of IGL. There's questions about his individual performance in the server. So him starting strong is actually quite impressive. Something we hope to see continue if you're a Legacy fan. It's because it's not a natural role for him to transition into the in-game leader. It's kind of his first real time just kind of out-venturing into the calling style and He's very good. Like that that's why. That's ultimately where the conversation has come about. If he can focus on his crosshair rather than what's going on all in the server, then it feels like he'd be a very important part of Legacy, but it's instilled identity into this team. It's made roles a lot more defined. Something they've always struggled with is the identity and also the permanence. When it comes to that fifth player, Bartan coming back in, having had previous experience, sure, under the leadership of Cold. But now thriving yet again, becoming a dependable pair of hands in this Nekis network. And look at how systematically they've been dealing with MIBR, even in these ecos. One player falling, and that is it. Buy out yet again, say finally, wielding this sniper. And you feel like the way that Cold Zero plays on the AWP, where it isn't very flashy, it's very much about locking down a position, that is where safe can profit. We saw it with Junior on Inferno, a map that isn't really defined by snipers. It was too little too late. Lato on the angle. And Safe's bypassed his position initially. Yeah, I like seeing Safe being able to take these forward positions. Lato is playing around the edge and signing spots him out. And off the angle is forced, but Cold has now stepped into his spot. And he has the open the position. Safe is Perhaps going to be tempted to slow peek into this angle, but Cold isn't holding for someone on this right side. Head to head, but... We have to find this round, but the smoke is going to come through. Safe repositions, and Cold is ready for the fade. Ready for this fight, and he finds it. Comes out ahead against Safe. Look at the rotates. Everyone from Legacy has prioritized B. There's been no pressure over towards A main. Nekis just steps in, confirms intel. People need to stay over on this B bomb site and two remain vigilant. 30 seconds left. MIBR feel that where they've got that kill, they have to commit to the exec. Even Cold's going to start to come over now. Zamal's seeing nothing over towards A and they're hearing dark. Two players set up towards Glyph. There is a Molotov on Insani. That can come through and flush them out, but no, it goes to Temple and it gives them free reign to fight, but only for a moment. Cold Zero's orb strikes. And it's Drop who has to collect the bomb, walking straight into that crosshair. And Legacy continue their flawless streak off the back of a triple kill from Cold Zero. No smokes, no utility. MIBR prioritizing so much space in towards middle. And guess what? Legacy, they gave them the room, but they didn't give them the opportunity to find the kills. Even with the rifler swapping with Cold. It goes back into that system of literally Cold Zero is holding down, locking down angles. 
It means the rifles can be flexible. It means you can reinforce the bomb sites that little bit faster. You can go for more proactive plays on the edge of the map. No bomb plants either, uh, causing issues for MIBR. You kind of get to this point where you've got full loss bonus on the T side and you're, you're finding a couple of kills in a round that as long as you get the bomb down, you kind of got buys consistently, but even getting into the sites is proving to be a serious issue for them. So are kills. Insani yet to post a singular one. Drop, save, combined have two. Bartan dropping utility, starting to feel pressure, but through dark, MIBR go, but it's Brenton with the first. Lato trying to adjust, kind of called in the reinforcements, and they're all here in time. It's a complete mow down on the B bomb site, and safe is left scratching his head, figuring out, well, I can't plant the bomb here. I have to look elsewhere. This has information that a, a fair few numbers where it be. Maybe he can catch the timing. Head over towards the A bomb site. Damao is going to be meeting him in towards middle. There's a world where if Safe either gets past or gets the headshot onto Damao instantly, that maybe he can make something happen. He's aware of Damao's position. Oh, the chick on the angle, they both spot each other immediately. Both other CTs come on over to meet this position. Safe hasn't budged, hoping for the repeat. So a bomb plant, even now, not going to be possible. Gold Zero, another multi-kill as he mows down safe. It actually sucks that these spots do Mao because that completely halts his progression because he thinks that they're going to step back in towards mid to try and confirm if he's gone towards A. Whereas if he doesn't spot him at the first instance, there's a 50-50 chance he actually goes to the right bomb site and he's able to get the bomb down at the very least. But yet again, it's just Legacy setting themselves up for success. The quick rotates. It's also just immediately recycling this utility to keep MIBR out and push them into all of these rifles. It's so difficult to contend with. No bomb plant also means no money for safe to be able to acquire this AWP. And Cold Zero, this is the most aggressive we've seen him so far in towards mid. Supported by Nekis, who will go down. Insani gets traded immediately. I'm loving what we're seeing from Cold Zero. He's not missed a shot yet. Look at this from Doom Al. He's crept forward, found a gap in the flames. Drop, not going to be ready, but he still manages to find the kill. So now Cold Zero, who I've just praised for his shots, will need to hit a few more. The entirety of MIBR is coming on through. Utility over the top. Doesn't quite find Barton. Force off the angle. Reinforcements. Coming on through a late flank from Barton. And Lado catches drop as he tried to get up through the heaven smoke. The blow on the HE giving him an opportunity. And it's a tech nine that's fighting forward into two AKs. And yet still, Cold Zero continues to dominate them. Exit gets two back, but Barton's flank was not accounted for. What a round from Cold Zero as well. I cannot believe it. it's a Tech 9 against two AK 47s. They're so scared to peek him. They don't want to go round this corner straight into him. The flank was so delayed as well by Bartan to the point where MIBR did not think there was a single chance someone could come and backstab. But it's all Cold Zero at the start, at the middle, and at the end, providing all of this space for Bartan to come through and dismantle exit. Despite his best efforts, it's Legacy 7-0 up on their map pick against MIBR. And it's Cold Zero leading them through it. 15 kills in seven rounds, a 2.0 KD. He has over 200 ADR right now. Rolling back the years, two times major winner, two times major MVP. MIBR have 16 kills on the server between all of them, and Cold Zero has 15. 210 ADR. A one-man wrecking machine. It's like we're in 2016 all over again. But this time with the AWP. And this time with the backup. Look, Nekis and Lato, they're still putting up very high numbers when it comes to the ADR. Exit is doing everything on his own. Yeah, the number is so big for Cold Zero. It makes 100 ADR look not so great, <laughs> which is kind of hilarious. It's legacy to take the pause as well, because that round gets a little bit chaotic. Directly off MRBR's pause as well. So as soon as they've decided what they're going to do, legacy is like, no, we're going to sit for another 30 seconds. What a play.
What a story this is as well, just playing all of the maps. That's a great graphic to bring up. Thank you, production, for that one. Five multi-kills from Cold Zero. We're only seven rounds in. 100% open in jewels is what I want to focus on against safe. Four and zero in direct duels. It should be safe that has the advantage on Cold Zero. That's how it should play out. The way that this team sets up the explosive nature of safe should be able to find things. There he goes. Success netted for safe. Or back in his hands gets the opener. The peak from dark punished. Cold Zero is going to go reinforce the B bomb side off the back of that. It's a bit of aggression towards middle. Sani is very aware of the possibility based on his position, but no he goes off the throw util. He doesn't know. This is the first time that Legacy have really done anything like this. The first time that they've pushed it straight through the middle of the map. Safe finds another though on to neck his neck, creates a little bit of breathing room. Yeah, now overextends a little bit as does Lato. So despite Cold Zero's phenomenal map he's having so far, I think this is the round where finally he won't be able to absolutely devastate him, I'd be art. It's certainly going to go to B because look at where Exit is. Towards Goblin. Uh-oh. Uh, uh, uh. Oh, it's a drop, more like. That's the, that's the definition of a call an ambulance for not for me meme. Yeah, I was going for that with the vibe of the call. Maybe we'll get another multi-kill. <laughs> Safe's coming. But Safe wins this one. So much better from MYBR and the way that they set themselves up. It is really simple for them. Sure, they get a little bit overwhelmed by the, the push in towards mid, but you take a look at where the riflers are, it just makes sure that there's always easy trades. And Legacy, although they take the space, they can't really do too much with it. One of them has to retreat all the way back. The others then have to look for information and they go for these aggressive plays out towards B main. It gets punished by Brenzen and it gets punished by safe. Pull up the graphic on the screen immediately. Safe finds a hat trick. Finally, we get a response from MIBR. It's just like you put the spotlight on safe and he immediately feels the pressure. Well, good. He needs to. Yeah. We need to see safe in this map. It's been such a good storyline for him and Drop. We kind of talked about going into this map, Al. Since they left Furia, they've joined this team. It's felt like they've been able to find their footing. Drop is one of the highest statistical performers in the last few months, right? Just uh, just behind Insani. So they're the two lowest performers on the team so far. That round actually really hurt Legacy. Despite seven in a row, their money is at breaking point. These rounds have been close. They've been ending in like these two versus twos, these clutches that have been won out by Legacy as well. It hasn't all been sunshine and rainbows despite the scoreline looking so one-sided. There's a real world in which MIBR can yet again scavenge their way back, able to crawl into a position where it could be 7-5. Mal oh. gets legged by safe. We spotted him on that crossover. Look at the utility as well, primarily for Legacy. We talk about the responsiveness and their nature when it comes to dropping the smokes and the flashbangs. They've got very limited resources to work with. A lot of space being taken over for B main, and that's going to be the signal of intent for MIBR as everyone works their way forward. Great flash. Bartan finds exit. Perfect flashbang. What's the damage done to two of these legacy players? All unconfirmed though, bar the Bartan skirmish. Neckers has rotated over as well. They're going to defend on the front line here at the B-bomb site. I mean, absolute brawl. There's no Molotov for Glyph. Spamming through the side, trying to bait out the positions of his teammates. And Nathani does catch Barton through the smoke. And Lado, an unknown element, able to get one and make that a double. Safe still manages to plant the bomb somehow in the smoke and drop. Gets the kill onto Lado, who run out of bullets. And then spins around onto Damal. Both these players incredibly low, but safe with the AWP is on a good angle. No way to cover him off and drop his forward. He can swing off the contact of his teammate and time is ticking. They have to get going. Safe misses the mark and they're running him down. Sorry, drop that is. And oh, never mind, drop. 
doesn't miss his mark on the follow-up. Two headshots in quick succession. And that's now two in a row for MIBR. Yeah, this guy's not dropped off whatsoever. One bullet away from death under the most enormous amount of pressure, especially when Safe misses that shot on B main. Lato's been a nuisance. He's trying to deny all the bombs. There's such low HP, and yet Drop finds himself completely on his own, completely isolated, and that's where he does his best work. He stands up, he lets them know that MIBR are still here on the server. Yeah, what a response. Both in and out of the server from Drop. Just as mentioning, he's been one of the strongest players for them. You can see why. Closing that round with style. So clean. Well, exit opens this one and they are uh, able to deal with his pistol. Oh. <laughs> I'm not sure what happened to exit there. <laughs> Did he drop a grenade or something? I'm not sure. It's fine. It's okay. Look, there's a lot of damage, but it's okay. It might be our an easy one. No, I need to carry CSI on ex exit's death. That'll probably be. Obs, if we can get a replay on how he died. Our observers are very good. There you uh, go. <laughs> Oh, come on, that wasn't even close to going past the wall. Thank you, guys. <laughs> Thanks for showing us that. That's been this episode of CSI Anubis. Exit, exit. And Lexi finally back with a gun round. No AWP for Cold Zero, notably. If the MIBR straight back to A, they, they want to go for a pop, potentially. Just change up the pace and vary. They know the guns have just come back out in Sani. Oh, spots deck is, we'll find him as well. But Dumao steps in, but that creates the gap on A. There's even a third player in mid. Cold Zero is here as well. And a lot of presence here early, expecting a fight to come through. Dumao drops the smoke forward, but they're going to go ahead of it. Heishi comes on through, and Dumao deleted by drop. Smoking towards camera, it separates Cold Zero from the action, and you can bet your bottom dollar this is a save. Play for the final round. MIBR. Starting to get a roll on this T side. This is exactly what happened yesterday. Against NRG, they were down. It was a really slow start for MIBR. And yet they were able to build back in. They were able to just kind of take that breath. It was the individuals that really get the momentum going. And then it's the team play that gets them over the line. From 7-0 to a potential 7-5. Sure, it's not the best result on the T side, but you take it every single day of the week, considering you were getting absolutely rolled without any involvement in any of these bomb sites to start this map. Yeah. Legacy was running over them. And drops testing. Oh, I would have loved that second kill, but hey, he'll take the one. Last turn of the half. If you'd been able to keep three rifles alive, you'd be sitting a little prettier into this one. Still going to manage to get out four and fours. Kind of think that Barton should probably swap with Cold Zero. When someone's having a good game, I think you just give them the M4. Team player is Cold Zero, but also the position of the Bartan is quite notable for him to be kind of with this A1S. That's true, yeah. Sparing through smokes on dark, the long range duels. Look at this, just holding the angle, and they are creeping. They're going immediately. Bartan caught off guard. Obstructed by the flames as well. This is a faster round out of MIBR. They want to split up here again. Just like that smoke, the ladder going forward. The flashbang support perfectly. Two for him. MIBR can't get into B. Even Dark is smoked off, and another one lands there too. It's great timing on that hit. The entire squad of Legacy came over to support. It might be our still have to reset, and Legacy will start to move back on over. Just moving as a unit with this advantage they have, why wouldn't you? Yeah, but look at the bomb. It's up B main. Like, this is going to be uh, so difficult to try and grab. This is why they, they've completely left it open. And they can now skirmish in towards mid. Cold Zero finds safe. That's an AWP if he wants it. Really got to praise Legacy there because as soon as that smoke came in at the front of Dark, that's when the flashbang came over for B main. And that's what allowed Latos to get those double kills in the first instance. They know they've got the bomb here. Exit reclaims it. But now this also forces MIBR to go back into this bomb site. A little layering flashbangs as well. I think each killer has different assists on it. Flames forward. 
nice little double volley of utility towards backside. Smoke lands, but it's too late. Barton gets both, and Legacy dominate at the half, 8-4. Really impressed with that round from Legacy. Just the decision making, and it's the the reactions that have been rehearsed offline. It's the hard work they've been putting in the boot camps over in Europe to set themselves up with the best possible chance of succeeding. You're right. Double flashes in towards the B main, and then the rewalk in towards middle. They're doing it with numbers. Every single fight in that round for MIBR is unfair. And also unfun. Oh, three people have swung me. <laughs> yeah, that's that's never fun, is it? Because they're still maintaining a respectable 164 ADR. Promising signs I've had my BR is that obviously they struggled. They're now back a little bit. They've given themselves something to work with. Safe's been getting more involved in the game, and Sani's been finding a, no a number of opening kills. It is doable. It just looks objectively a long way off. Clean pistol would be a good way to get started. Split towards A looks to be the intent from Legacy. Safe gets Gush, so he has to fall back, and he's the only one kind of defending mid. Your exit deep in towards A. And between the two of them, they're going to have to fend off these five, and they realize it's not favorable. They're going to fall back. Safe fires off a warning shot, but the site is completely breached. At least there's players here on the flank, but again, you've already got Legacy reinforcing this. There's no utility, so it has to just be the Glocks finding the kills. Lasso full blind, the swing as well from Dumal can't help out, so Neck is an important kill alongside Bartan. They're funneling, MIBR out, but all the kills are coming back in their favor. And once again, the responsibility on Coldy knows the exit is in towards CT, but exit hits the shot. Is there enough time? Potentially, there's no kit, but it feels like X has got it. Fist bumps all around. They know that MIBR have claimed the pistol. Yeah, I thought Coldzera had done enough and he gets that kill on the player on cake, but he felt like he wanted to go for that fight and just confirm it. I wonder if maybe he just dropped down and played around cake. He just wasted another second. Might have been enough. But a great retake from MIBR. you got to say five on five. The flashbang set up into main is, is fantastic and... That double layering in towards CT spawn and towards the beach is enough to keep the pressure on to Legacy the whole time. Let's see then. Four spy for Legacy. As it does come down to that one versus one. Such fine margins dictated the pistol. Now for Legacy, it's control in towards middle. This is something that MIBR really struggled with on their T side, but uh, Legacy is setting the pace early. That incendiary is not going to help things whatsoever. That's gone too deep. No sound cue and Sani, you're about to be blindsided. Yeah. Not ready. Not ready at all. Exit is though. Can't get more than one. And that's the entirety of A again unraveled. They've found the way through, this time with kills to support. You might be, oh, you've just got these weapons out. You've just won the pistol, but it feels bitter, but you have to save. Yeah, but you do have to save. That's rough for Insani. He, he really doesn't feel like Legacy are going to be that far extended up in towards mid. So the incendiary, it's a, a fallacy of safety. An exit can only find one because, again, he's been swung on by so many of these Legacy players. So whilst there is hope, it immediately gets stamped out by Legacy. They still reinstate themselves on the server. They collect a ninth. Must be the reinvestment for MIB. I obviously made comfortable a little bit by dropping safe. Having these weapons. Yeah, the loss bonus isn't great, is it though? No, it's not. The thing is, if Legacy win this round, it's basically another one in addition. It goes up to 11. And from there, you've got so many to play with. And it's MIBR calling a pause because they understand the significance of this round. Get a bit on the mic. this round completely end their Anubis dreams. It's from Epic Legacy, and I guess we're starting to see the, the reasoning for bringing it through. It might be Ahu struggled against NRG on this map.
elimination game yesterday. Those woes continue here against Legacy, who come in a little bit more prepared. Ooh. Damn, that was cool. Cinematics on full display, and it really is lights, cameras, action here for round 15. Finally, the buy will come out. And for MIBR, it's about getting the rifles in the best possible position. See the safe is working his way over with these players towards a main. They want to push and force the issue potentially. Or they hope and pray that Legacy go through this smoke. They get a little bit aggro. This setup is very far advanced. Got the music going. It's like a full vibe. The tensions are high. It does feel cinematic. It's going to happen. <laughs> the beat drops just as the smoke fades. We get set up for the fight that's coming forward, a flashbang and a Molotov as well. They're forced off the line. Brenzen goes forward, but Damal doubles up. Safe gets one back with the spray. Nekez on the lurk, gets his as well. And Safe behind Keg, not feeling like his namesake. Such low HP, but he's still found another under Barton. Cold flushes him out and somehow Safe is still standing, but not for long, eventually dealt with. Drop gets his kill, but he's so far removed from the action. Bomb did have to get collected, but already this is being held. Drop. No way. Nekes is ready for you. Double digits for Legacy. Got to give a lot of credit there to Safe, but ultimately that was a really easy round for Legacy. It's just a simple flash play. It's the Galils finding the success. The Obviously the MP9, the 5.7, the weapons you don't really expect to do the damage, find nothing. Safe hits one back with the tray, but they just line up for Doom out. And when you get this kill, I feel like Nekis was just going to throw it all into the A-bomb site. Instead, he's a lot more reserved. He's worried about the flank potential. Which allows Safe to at least inflict more damage on these enemies. But they're getting loud. USPs. I, I know this is a very serious uh, matchup, but... It'd be really cool to just cast with the backing audio all the time, like the soundtrack in the background. It kind of really adds an extra element to it. It really got exciting. Only excitement for my bar in this round is going to be that one kill from safe with the USP. Not going to amount to too much as Legacy flew away from taking their map pick. This is actually really terrifying for MIBR. Like the fact that Legacy are making them look like just second best in every single one of these rounds. Every round that MIBR won was really hard fought for. It didn't really feel like it was ever comfortable in the successes that they had on the server. You then go into Vertigo and Legacy have shown that they play this map. You then go into Inferno, a map that Legacy historically been really strong on. You're always fighting on the back foot. It felt like Anubis would be a really good level playing field. It's been anything but. Still a long series ahead of us, though. Say Ford with the AWP finally gets it on the CT side. Safe is going to force him forward. He's sitting in it for a moment. The smoke comes through to support him, but the flashbang is going to force him off the line. Because the result will get a chance as the HE does blow that smoke, but not going to spot anybody. Holding from the right-hand side, so he's not exposed to the window peak. His mid control isn't theirs. The main does look to be MIBRs for a moment, but counter flash. This is very controlled approach from both squads. From MIBR, you can understand everything on the line here. Damal trying to pound, and he's done damage, and he's not looking to finish it up yet. Keeps them at bay. They're not going a. Eh? This is all just a, a little bit of a mini game, ping pong with the flashbangs just to keep the control. But it ultimately has anchored all of MIBR over at A. And now it's going to be this crunch. Fantastic incendiary, but it doesn't burn Bartan. So the information's still not there. Rotation's on the way, but they might not be here in time. Yeah, they've been fairly loud in dark and, and time is running out. 20 seconds, smoke goes on forward towards Temple. Now going to be hitting into the site. Red Snow does get his kill and he's stepped up for another. Playing around the pillar, he's got space to work with. Cold Zira continuing, but put down by safe. And time is now running out for Lato when Sani picks up the AWP and keeps MIBR in Anubis. Yeah, it really feels like the 
pressure and the contact needs to come out the B main players there whilst the players are resetting from A to dark. Instead, it's the other way around. And that's why you get really just a complication of a hesitation from Legacy. Do we go in? Do we go out? MIBR get all the info because they were being vocal at dark. But if the B main players take the contact and then Legacy come through dark at the same time, that's where the pincer is going to be a lot more effective. And that's why MIBR won't get the head start on the rotations. Instead, they gather all the information. They get the right idea. They're able to hold on once more. Another pause comes through for Legacy. Managed to get the investment through, despite the lack of a bump plant that lost is starting to add up. Something big happened on the A string. Yeah, I know. I, I just <laughs> thought it was pause while I was listening to uh, Tea Time, who <laughs> was able to be heard from our studio. Very passionate game happening over there. This is quick. This is, uh, again, a limit test for Legacy. They just want to extend the play with something a little bit basic to try and test MIBR and their defense. Flashbang, not good enough. Brenzen, oh, perfectly timed. Neck is though. Doesn't matter if he burns alive, he's created the space called Zero. Feels like he needs to go through the incendiaries. Bomb plant is a guarantee at this point, but the round being secured, that's another matter. Yeah, I feel like he kind of thought it wasn't going to last quite as long as it did. Killed his teammate like three seconds ago. He kind of feels like he wasn't going to do half his health points. He has a smoke and a molly, and I wonder if he's going to Lock off one of these positions with that util. Time's running out to kind of do that. Damal's going forward for the fight. Can't win it onto Insani, so Cold Zero. Needs a one versus three clutch. No one's coming from the canals. It's all going to be on the site, and they know where he is. Nowhere else he could be. A smoke lands in his face. And that's what he was saving the Molotov for. Throws it forward, but what? it bounces. It bounces off the mark. Frey comes on through, gets the kill, but exit is safe. So MIBR, another round comes through. That's so unlucky. I don't even know what it bounces off, but it just feels like a, a rogue pebble. A little stone just preventing Cold Zero from laying down the utility. Insani, that's such an important fight to win over at B main on Doom Owl. Because he grabs that kill, we can then take the space back away from B main. Yola Alazan just gets those double kills of the MP9. Utility just enough to get MIBR through. But every round, it just still feels like it's two for the nail. It feels like MIBR are just about holding on. And that was a test of their mental strength. How long can they do this for? Temporary respite with the Tech Nines called Zero armed with an AK. There's only two players on their side defending, though. And drop. Oh, he puts forth the smoke. They burst on through. Can control his spray for one. Brenton gets his as well, but Cold Zero with that AK runs on through. Insani's going to drop on down. That's a cool silent drop he just pulls off. Bomb needs to be thrown over to be planted. Exit scene that come through. Smoke dribbled on board. That's going to give some coverage. Good damage done by safe with the orb through the edge of the wall. And Insani's found Barton. It's a post plan with both players set up in the same position. A flashbang passed on over for Damal. Cold Zira calling for the support. The flashbang on through when they tap that bomb so he can swing. Being set up for a multi-kill to find map point. But a smoke onto the bomb is going to make it a little bit more tricky. There's that flash. But a counter flash comes through. Cold can't swing. And his position is known. Exit is sticking through the smoke. The spray for Jamal finds it. And Cold got his as well. No way. They managed to do it in the post plan. Cold zero denying the bomb. And that's MIBR again fumbling. Sure, there's a smoke on the bomb, but you got so many in your pocket. There was three there. One on every single player. Just drop them. Going towards B main. You've cleared dark. You know they have to be over here. You've heard the flash come in. You've seen the swing out of Cold Zero. Drop your utility. Exit dies with the smoke in his hand. MIBR. Now have to pick up five in a row. It's Tech Nines and a Hero AK saved over from the previous round. The Get Legacy to this point. Two MP9s, two five sevens, and a Desert Eagle. Surely not happening. Legacy cave in. 
out a systematic pathway to be able to grab this map. It's relied on clutches, it's relied on individuals, but at the heart of all of it was team play and cohesion, push, a main, another flashbang. There's been so many counter flashes that have been thrown into this exact position, this time accommodated with flames. Dumal finds Insani, and potentially this is the first MIBR domino to topple. Flashbang doesn't really help out. Bartan finds the trade. Safe's going forward. Looking for the weaponry. He's going to find that AK. AK in the back lines. It's an oh. awkward fight, but he wins it out. And now they can split on towards B. Drop is here. He's all alone with an MP9 in his hands. His reinforcements coming, but they're being loud. Nekas is hearing it. And he's going to lock it off. Never mind. Safe jumps around the corner. But now he's the one that has to come up clutch, and he can't get it done. Ladder is there to close. Yeah, well done there from Legacy yet again. It's just them prevailing. Picked Anubis as a punish. They saw MIBR and how they faltered against NRG yesterday. Were able to come back in that game, but it still didn't really feel comfortable. Which, sometimes, which is something you highlighted, Lucy, but 